Αγαπητοί φίλοι και φίλε, καλησπέρα. Καλώ ορίσατε στο φακό του Hellenic TV. Σήμερα έχουμε ένα πολύ πολύ ενδιαφέρον ε, θέμα και έχουμε την ε, παραγωγό μια, ε, ενός πολύ σημαντικού ντοκιμαντέρ το οποίο είναι η ζωή μετά τη ζωή, life after life, η ρομή της πόλης. Θα καλωσορίσουμε την Κενού. Πώς το λέω, Is this correct, Κενού? Is yes. this correct? Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. And I have to congratulate you. You know, it's amazing uh, documentary. And thank, thank you, you for doing this um, uh, documentary. But we would like to know more about you. Can you tell us about yourself? Who are you? And you decided to make this film about the Greeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will certainly come to that. <laughs> And I think it's a, probably a very important point that we should talk about. Uh, yeah, so who am I? Uh, it's a difficult question to answer, actually. <laughs> well, I'm from Turkey. Uh, and I grew up uh, in Izmir and for the university, I moved to Istanbul where I studied art history and archaeology. So then I did my MA in museum studies in the UK and then PhD half in the UK and half in Germany in museum and heritage studies with uh, anthropological approaches and methods, which is very common in uh, museum and heritage studies. And in my PhD, I explored state level narratives in Turkish museums. Uh, and after thinking about all of these national level stories and how uh, the state uses them, I wanted to explore the stories that mm -hmm. don't make to museum or into other public spaces. So this is kind of also common in our heritage and museum studies. We always question, you know, what is dominant, what is not. Uh, so there is this uh, dimension and, you know, backgrounds that I have. So I also uh, become very interested in a concept of heritage as uh, something that can be very personal, uh, even private, community-based, uh, and not shown uh, in a big state museum. Instead, we can find these in maybe people's living room or, you know, uh, or community places, you know, in their personal photography uh, collections and so on. So these are my general concepts and approaches and who I am. But uh, specifically, my case studies are almost always related to Const uh, Constantinople, Istanbul. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the memories and heritages of Istanbul are my big interests. And, uh, you know, we can come to that, of course. <laughs> so what inspired you, actually, to get involved, you know, with the Greeks of uh, Constantinople, to, that you wanted to, to find out more and uh, actually do a lovely, a very emotional documentary? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so I got, you know, um, probably I can answer this uh, in two ways. So what inspired me? Uh, is probably, I mean, I can start with my, you know, uh, background, uh, you know, I'm uh, as I explained. So I'm a researcher in Museum and Heritage Studies, uh, and I have these anthropological approaches in my research. Uh, and as I said, a lot of what I engage with uh, in terms of heritage is not recognized in her, uh, official mm -hmm. heritage. Uh, so, uh, and for me, it is always important to find other methods and platforms for recognizing and making visible these uh, otherwise, you know, uh, hidden uh, histories. Uh, because if you don't do uh, anything, they are at risk of disappearing. Uh, so because, you know, I'm in academia, so we write mm. books and stuff, but it's not enough. It's good, it's a good record, we should do that. But also it's good to also make it somehow visible. So mm. to do that, I work with two main platforms. One is a digital memory map, uh, which I'm developing as part of uh, this research. It's about, you know, again, uh, heritages and memories of uh, uh, Istanbul's Greeks. Uh, and the other one is, is the film. And uh, why Greeks? Is it, of course, a different question if you want me to? Yes, please. Yeah. So I think it's also kind of related to... Uh, you know, uh, 
my knowledge about Greeks, my relationship about Greeks in Turkey. <laughs> I mean, Greeks, uh, I mean, we have two words, by the way, like uh, for Greeks, we have Yunan, which is about, you know, Greece is Greeks. Actually, it comes from Ionian. Um, <laughs> and the other one uh, is Rum, which comes from Roman. It refers to, you know, Byzantine Empire. So they're actually, in Turkish, the words are also related to Greek words. So, I mean, either Rum, you know, or Ionius, Yunnan, uh, in general, um, uh, yeah, uh, of course, it, it was always a question uh, for me. Uh, so I would say uh, I did not know much about these communities when I was, you know, in Turkey. And this was exactly my point, you know, as someone who grew up uh, in Turkey, uh, we are not thought uh, we, uh, we are not taught about these communities, and I always had a curiosity of this community, and later it increased. You know, I mean, I can start with earlier years before you know I went to the university and stuff. You know, I grew up in Izmir, so in my environment in Turkey, in general, you hear the word Greek in Turkey or like Greek music is around you, like I, especially I don't know Theodorakis, Farantoui. Mm. You know, I, I used to listen to these a lot, especially Theodorakis was a big inspiration when I was a teenager. I used to, you know, work in a bookshop, so we used to play him. So, you know, that you have this sort of uh, relationship with music. Uh, and then, of course, you we, you hear the work, uh, you know, like Greek tavern. Uh, but this is in a, I think, more romanticized sense, something sweet. Uh, or, you know, in Turkey, even today, you would see uh, a cafe called Eleni's Place. Mm. Uh, like uh, this, you will see this place um, uh, where there used to be Greeks. Uh, so, but this is also, you know, uh, uh, not it's not just me, but uh, also uh, there are people who question this romanticized version of Greeks uh, rooms, as we say, um, in relation to, you know, Turkey's uh, mm -hmm. Greeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, for example, I never forget my, my, one of my friends, uh, she's Turkish. So she went to this, um, uh, I think she went to Imros, you know, Gökçada, be called in Turkish today. And uh, they went to this cafe, it was called Eleni's Cafe. And my friend is like, uh, uh, I would like to talk to Eleni, please. <laughs> it's like, you know, sort of challenging people. Uh, about this romanticized version uh, of, you know, using, if you don't have Eleni, please don't call, you know, I mean, the, the point is we want this real, not just a like sweet romanticized uh, thing. So, I mean, in general, anyway, there is this messy and pervasive knowledge about the Greeks that goes around in Turkey, but it's always incomplete uh, because, uh, you know, you have to sort of piece it together uh, obviously, you don't learn about it in school or in museums. I mean, except, of course, the wars uh, with, with Greece. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I used to walk in Izmir a lot and you hear these words like uh, this was a Greek house, blah, blah. And I was told, well, who are these people who are very close, but so far uh, away mm -hmm. at the same time? Uh, so and then, of course, then uh, this was before I moved to Istanbul then. Of course, in Istanbul, you have completely, you know, new, amazing story in relation to Greeks, you know, especially studying our history and archaeology in Istanbul makes you think a lot about history of the city. Uh, uh, and of course, the Byzantine past is still very uh, visible to me, at least. <laughs> and this becomes even more noticeable when you study it. And I remember walking around actual Constantinople, you know, the historic Constantinople, all these inside the walls. Uh, at the time had a lot of impact on me. Uh, and while I was walking, I used to see many Greek Orthodox churches, Greek schools with like these big walls or doors, uh, you know, like massive uh, iron big doors around them. And I was like, uh, always thinking, you know, like, um, again, curious about what was behind this, you know, it's kind of an interesting feeling because you're from the same country, these, you know, you are with them, but there is, there are always barriers and you don't know where they are. Uh, so that was a bit strange. It was always a question in my mind. And I, one day with my friend, I went to the Patriarchate uh, in Fener. Uh, and I think that also increased my uh, interest and uh, curiosity for um, 
for this group, uh, for this uh, uh, community, because also they were very friendly and supportive. I mean, Patriarchate is more than, a, I always say, more than just a, like a religious center. It's, you know, it's got also amazing library and they run a lot of, you know, cultural things. And when you go as a just a, you know, secular, <laughs> random woman. Um, and I remember uh, they helped us sometimes, like we had to do some, you know, like essays. We didn't have enough um, uh, resources in Turkish and stuff. So they would actually read some Greek for us or Byzantine art. So anyway, this is also another. Very, of- very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And it's very interesting that, that you used to listen to Mikis Theodorakis because Mikis Theodorakis is quite patriotic. You know, his songs, I don't know if you understood them. Course, yeah, yeah. or if it was the, the music, you know, uh, you know that it was like an attraction to you, you know, or you the voice, you know. So it's very interesting that you uh, you used to be a fan of Miki Theodorakis. But you know, his nationalism it wasn't like a quite <laughs> hard. Uh, right-wing nationalism so uh, you know it was against junta and things like that so in that sense acceptable nationalism perhaps yes yes uh, kind of, but, uh, yeah. also uh, you know uh, i noticed that you use for the like uh, you say sometimes istanbul or constantinople you know so um how do you think i mean what is your perception about the two different names yeah Name politics. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. As I said, I mean, yeah, it's kind of, uh, of course, it's you know, Constantinople, you know, Constantinopolis, as we say, you know, in Turkish, uh, and uh, but you know, when I speak in English, I always use the word Istanbul, or if I speak in Turkish, also I use the word Istanbul, but if I speak in Greek, I use the word Constantinople because that's how mm. it is. So we it's have easier, to isn't it, to pronounce it as well? I think. That- Especially for you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning Greek, so it's not. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Well yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a different yeah matter. But yeah, it's a different story. But yeah. So I don't really uh, mind that. So I think in English, especially if I'm giving a talk uh, for especially English speaking audiences for British people, for example, it's confusing if you use the word Constantinople because um, it, it, it refers to historic time. So there is this, you know, historical confusion can uh, happen because today is accepted as Istanbul. Uh, so, but if I'm speaking in Greek, of course, I don't say Istanbul because I know that it's, you know, Constantinople, Constantinopoli. Constantinopoli, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Oh, Poli. Usually yeah, I think that it's just Poli. Yes, in yeah, so. Poli. <laughs> and I think uh, Istanbul, it means actually Istanbuli. Yeah, uh, yeah, from yeah. what uh, you know, so that's I a mean, common idea. Yes, that it comes from actually Greek, which is also I don't understand why. I mean, sometimes I, you can see some Turkish nationalists also say, "No, no, it comes from Greek," and I'm like, "Well, why is the problem?" Because okay, let's forget about Istanbul. There are a lot of cities in Turkey actually come from Greek: Gallipoli, Gallipolu, yes. Smyrna, Izmir, Trabzon, Trabzon. I don't know. You know, it's like. Nothing unusual. And also for centuries, Ottomans used the word Constantinia. So, uh, you know, and also I, I also think we shouldn't really worry about this. And if people mm-hmm. want to call it Istanbul, that's fine. And if people want to see it as Constantinople, it's fine. It's people's feelings, people's relationships. And I respect all of the use. And of course, for me, it's also, you know, Constantinople, when people tell me, well, you know, you should say this or that, but I'm like, well, all my work is about actually protecting the memories of Constantinople. So, of course, it's, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, I have actually um, uh, some friends, uh, friends and family, they are really, really lovely, they are Turkish, and uh, whenever I go to their house, you know, we made a deal, they will say, would you like Greek coffee? And if they come to my house, then I would say, would you like Turkish coffee? It's like being polite to each other, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with my friends and stuff, I was just like, yeah, do you want Greek, Turkish, you know, whatever, that coffee you want. Yes. <laughs> Especially with what you are doing, it's important to leave aside the politics and just focus you know, about your research and find out, uh, you know, more about what you're trying to, you know, to focus on your, or your goal instead of 
yeah. get involved with the rest. I think, you know, where you are getting involved, you know, you can't really get away from politics because what you're doing is always uh, shows a political stance. Uh, so, I mean, like, if I had really strict, uh, you know, rules about it, like, oh, it's definitely Istanbul, you know, yeah, or, you know, this. But I think is I just respect each uh, use yeah. and... Uh, Sometimes it's because of the context that I have to use, you know, Constantinople or Istanbul. So it's, yeah. Yes, and it's it, the same, because, you know, like, uh, you know, we call these uh, communities uh, Rom, uh, Romeos. Uh, Romeos is Constantinople, right? Uh, so it's, uh, uh, and then I say, okay, in, in English it's confusing. No one knows Romeos, Rom and stuff. So you have to say Greek. And I don't think it's a problem as well, yes. because they're speaking Orthodox communities. So, but in Turkish, if you call Yunan, yes. as I said, Ionian, then that means actually Greeks, Greece is Greeks. So Greek citizens, Greeks. So it's just that I think the problem is all these nation states politics also um, complicate things. And sometimes mm. when I, uh, you know, work with people, it doesn't matter when it comes to, you know, all these memories and heritages, you know, we can't always think with the nation state ideas. Yeah, because absolutely. Of, because the two cities, two lands, like Athens to Istanbul, Asia Minor to, you know, mainland Greece is so linked that sometimes, you know, you, you experience something and then you can't always put the border there. So it's quite tiring as well. It is. It can be. I can imagine. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, so, again, uh, what is the biggest challenge uh, you faced while you were making this documentary? I think uh, the biggest challenge probably, uh, well, I had so many interesting stories that I could have told in the film and in my research in general, of course. Uh, uh, but Gem and I thought, you know, uh, Gem is, you know, other uh, uh, filmmaker. I made this film with him. Uh, so we thought, how do we make them all work together? Mm. That's the challenge because you have different, you know, kind of stories. And, and of course, this is just not a homogeneous uh, community. There are, you know, diverse uh, experiences diverse uh, uh, uh, relationship with the past and today. So, how you know, of course, it's uh, quite complex. So how do we make sense of that? Uh, and also in the end, uh, in my research, you know, with Memory Map or with hopefully coming up, uh, coming book, um, I'm telling uh, the stories of people and need to be careful about how I present them in a way that they want. Uh, I was very, uh, I think I was very nervous uh, about hearing my participants or other community members comments after I sent the film to them. I was like, oh no, I hope <laughs> it was okay, you know, because it's their story in the end. And luckily they were happy. They were uh, happy. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, so we screened the film in, at the Federation uh, of the Constantinopolitans in Athens uh, I was giving a certificate uh, thanking me for my engagement and recognition of the community's history. And I must say it was Absolutely. the best <laughs> Absolutely. for me. So, mm -hmm. and of course, doing this work during pandemic, it was hard as well. But this I can imagine, I can imagine, but you did an excellent job. But what about the Turkish community? And um, how did they see it? Because obviously you are revealing quite sensitive matters you know uh would you perhaps you know the young uh, gener generation don't know about this so did you have any objections or any negative thoughts i think this is a yeah uh, interesting and good question um uh, not so far okay uh, good <laughs> I think, uh, yeah uh, only once one person questioned what, what i was going to do with this like, you know, this person saw me a few times. It was an off Turkish official, you know, going and talking, uh, you know, to Greeks of Istanbul. And, and then they saw, you know, he saw the camera and stuff like that. And then he asked me many questions. And in the end, I just said, well, uh, the, you know, rooms, you know, Greeks of Istanbul um, uh, and I and you, uh, we are from the same country. 
Mm. Why can I not be curious about them? <laughs> so I just, this is my basic explanation. Like, why yes. not? You know, we are together. And it's like, why is it them, they, me, you? I mean, exactly. You know? yeah. Actually, he stopped and said, yes, of course. So he stopped after that. So he actually, he thought, okay, it makes sense. It makes sense. Good. <laughs> But so you, you have managed to give a good uh, explanation, which is great. Well done to you. But of course, you know, this is not just a one view. So another person in a similar position, interestingly, again in Turkey, I mean, in Istanbul, uh, said what I was doing was important and it will be a disaster to lose this community in Istanbul. So uh, I think in general, I would say many people in Turkey are also interested in this community. And in fact, there are good publications about, uh, about this community by Turkish researchers, Turkey, uh, Turkish uh, writers in Turkish. And uh, in fact, they were very helpful for me to learn about their political and social history uh, before I started my you know, research. And also, I was surprised that there, there aren't enough publications about this community in English. And to be honest, in my experience, many Greeks in Greece also don't always know about this community. Uh, and uh, also, I think in the film also, you can see that uh, uh, when uh, uh, Greeks uh, were uh, displaced from Turkey, sometimes... Uh, they also encountered prejudice uh, when they arrived in Greece. So they were also, mar you know, sort of, they were marginalized in Turkey, but also in Greece too. I mean, it's different now, but you yes. know, their, their first arrival was also quite hard. So in one scene of the film, an older man remembers how they would be called infidels in Turkey. But when they went to Greece, they were called Turkish seats as an insult. Mm -hmm. So... I think, again, it comes to like a key problem here is that our modern nation state borders don't match with the way in which people inhabit the world uh, in past. Uh, you know, uh, for example, it's hard to get people to understand that a lot of the Istanbuli Greeks I work with or as uh, Constantinopolitans, as we can say, had never been to Greece before they were expelled from Turkey. Uh, you know, I mean, this is also quite an interesting point in a way. Because uh, this is not also unique, we can also think about the Armenian population in modern day Turkey, Turkey uh, in the same way as a historic people who have been, uh, you know, present for centuries, like Greeks, sometimes for, for thousands of years. So these days we think about citizenship that puts us into a particular nation state. But in our minds, as we talked about it, you know, in memory and heritage, it doesn't work like that. So we need to think about uh, think about times when peoples like Greeks, Armenians, or whoever were actually spread across different parts of uh, that region of the world. I mean, across what we call Turkey now. So uh, people moved, and the nation states changed. So people belong to you know. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, and it's, and also it's okay to belong to two places. You can be from Istanbul, but now you live in Athens and it's also your home because also you're related with your language and, you know, religion and culture, but also you're connected in different ways to the other country. I think it's really challenging sometimes for people to, you know, push to belong to just one place. Absolutely. And I don't think it's necessary. Uh, do you feel that, uh, would you say that they have some kind of insecurities? Because as you said, uh, I mean, perhaps when they just arrived in Athens, they felt un unwelcome. So, of course, this is uh, affecting um, uh, the psychology and uh, it's, it creates a little kind of complex, you know, feeling like, where do I belong? You know, I'm Greek, but I'm not wanted. Um, you know, they don't want me in, in, in Constantinople. Uh, so who am I? What do I have to do? Where do I go? Did you come across this kind of uh, feelings while you yeah. were doing your research? Yeah, definitely. You know, older generations. Uh, no, I mean, again, this is not like, a, we can't generalize it. Not everyone had the same of experience. Of course. Sure. We know that some did. You know, they they they actually, yeah, they were insulted as like being Turkish seats. Uh, so, 
And of course, that affects their belonging. And then, of course, they become just like one close community. And I heard from uh, Greeks in Greece saying, oh, they're a close community. But of course, it's changing with the new generation. It's a different thing. Uh, but with the old generation, it's normal, you know, because you weren't uh, very welcomed at the time. Uh, although, it's, as I said, what they say in the film also, like one uh, other person says, well, actually, it was at the beginning. Now it's different because she says that because we showed ourselves, we showed who we were. So basically, people actually had to work hard to show to prove them that they are actually yeah, they have to prove themselves. That is yes. actually sad. You know? Yes. And that yes. is their proud now because they say, well, we are accepted. They Now they understand. In fact, um, I heard that quite a lot. Uh, it say, in fact, in, in the film, uh, uh, she also says, they say, were you, were you baptized? And then she's like, very emotional about it. Well, of course, there is patriarchy, which is the first oh. you know, a Greek Orthodox church in the world. And they are proud of that. You know, they, they were baptized in the patriarchate in Fener. And, and then they get this question, even like, are you Christian? Are you Muslim? What are you? So, yes. Oh, and of course, imagine uh, this is in your memory. So I think uh, the situation of this community uh, is interesting. They were marginalized uh, in Turkey and there were some problems in Greece as well. And as I said, it's really interesting that people don't know much about them. Yes, uh, I mean, it's not, it, it, very true. It's a... Uh down to knowledge as well, because, I mean, Greeks, as you said, um, like they were calling them Turkish seeds, you know, and I actually heard stories that, uh, that was years back, and uh, Greeks from, you know, Constantinople uh, arrived in Cyprus and at the airport, because he says, born in Istanbul, but with the name Andreas, they were asking them, are you Turkish? You know, and they had difficulties entering uh, Cyprus. They had to go through lots of questions before they allowed them, uh, you know, uh, to get in. So it's knowledge as well. I think now people are learning. But before we carry on, I think we are going to watch this amazing trailer. Okay, sure. Thank you. Istanbul. Let me look at him. Doğduğum yer Çok sevdiğim bir yer Eski İstanbulları çok hasret ediyorum Artık yok, yoklar İstanbul Rum toplumu Mübadeleden istisna edilen tek toplumdu İmroz ve Bozcaada adalarıyla beraber Epeyce Rum vardı fakat bugün maalesef yalnız ben ve eşim kaldık. Evlerden de bir tek bizim evimiz kaldı Rum evi olarak. Size bir hafta süre veriyoruz. Alın malınızı bir, yani bir çanta içinde yani mal, mal mülkü değil bir çanta içinde alın ama şey kıymetli şeyler almayacaksınız. Eşyalar filan ve 500 dolar. Buranın tekrardan yaşamaya başlaması, tekrardan ana dilimizin duyulması, bir o kadar şarkıların, türkülerin, panayırların canlanması zannedersem bizim benim jenerasyonumun artık e, görevi gibi ben öldüğüm öldüğüm zaman beni oraya gidecek gideceksiniz anladınız mı öyle konuşuyordu annem beni burada gömmeyeceksiniz orada anne öyle şeyler olmaz çok para istiyor yani canınızı yani öyle konuştum annemle neyse beni oraya gideceksin akrabalarımın yanında olmak istiyorum olmak istiyorum dedi annemin babamın yanında onu şimdi yapıyor
Okay, uh, I have to say, you know, that uh, the first time I watched this uh, documentary, I was reduced to tears. And I think not just because I'm great, but I think even if I watch, you know, these people, if they were Turkish or Indian or any nationality, listening to these sensitive stories, you get emotional. Can you tell us about your feelings? I mean, how did you feel listening, uh, you know, uh, to these people? Mm, yeah, I think, first of all, I like the way how you put it in, like, uh, it doesn't have to be Greek or Turkish. Mm. It's about people's stories, people's sadness, uh, people's uh, sensitive uh, stories, uh, as you say. So that's why I think when I do this sort of research, first of all, I don't care about uh, national politics. <laughs> I'm yes. not interested in Turkish Greek politics, uh, how they work, borders, this, that, you know, uh, it's not. I, of course, what I'm saying, you know, of course, still this is political, but not state politics that I'm interested in, in that sense. Uh, I'm interested in people, what they feel, what they want to say, and I like listening to them. So it doesn't matter Greek or this or, you know, so anyway. So, uh, but it, uh, I have actually usually, I have always been interested in people's stories, not just what they say, but also how they say it what it means to them and I, how they feel. Uh, and that's a natural part of my character, I will say, but also I have uh, uh, anthro anthropological training, which is also about engaging sensitively with people to understand their lives. And of course, sometimes I'm affected by people's stories and people can be very emotional when they tell me their stories. Uh, however, it's all, all also very important to people to be listened to and to have an opportunity to talk about memories that perhaps get ignored by others. So people are often ready to tell their stories. And for me, uh, it's a privilege to listen to them. Uh, not all stories are entirely sad ones. Actually, sometimes people talk about food or nice memories. And I think it's important to know that the memory of marginalized communities is not all negative. Otherwise, we lose the memory of positive aspects of culture that were taken away. So actual culture just disappears, you know, under all this suffering. So, in fact, uh, I remember one participant said uh, to me that he was tired of talking about the pogrom that took place in 1955 in Istanbul, you know, against the Greek communities of Istanbul. And he said, you know, uh, he would get he would he would get texts, uh, you know, for commemorations from his Turkish friends and stuff. But he was actually tired, so he actually wanted to focus on good things uh, as well and positive memories. So we have to find ways of remembering bad things and good things in the right balance. Otherwise, everything becomes about the history of suffering, which communities don't always want. So we have to listen to, you know. Yeah, what they really want. So, yeah, I mean, this is not one his one story. It's always many stories and many perspectives, and some of which look at the past as sa sad mm -hmm. uh, and distressing, and some of some of which don't. So, it's a complex situation, and uh, and that's partly my job to show in my work. Uh, you know, also, for example, in the film, we see how optimistic and positive the headmasters of the Greek schools are. You know, they have very, very small number of students today. These big castle-like sc amazing schools have 30 to 40 students. You know, if they're lucky, they get 50 maximum. So, it's very important to show how much energy they give to the community and how they balance a realistic perspective on the community's history with optimism, even with their singing, you know, so you have to listen to Absolutely. this. And of course, it's a lot of emotional labor for me as well. But because of all these reasons, I think, uh, yeah. You need to focus on what you are doing. I mean, would you say that, uh, I mean, what did you actually pick from the feelings? Like, is it more like anger or sadness or nostalgic? Mm, I think a very, very good question uh, again. Uh, I think, you know what, 
I didn't feel anger very much. I didn't feel anger in people in my field work. I mean, I heard that some people were angry. They didn't want to, they didn't want to talk about their okay. time in Istanbul at all. Of course, there are people like this. But in my field work, people were, I think, just sad. Uh, even I think often, you know, the memories are maybe, you know, uh, optimistic and, you know, sort of joyful. I think in the end, it's a bit sad because it's lost. So it's about loss. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think a lot of, uh, yeah, see, if feelings about loss came out a lot. Sure. sure. And where so, was it, um, where, where did you make this documentary, Kine? Was it, so, uh, I mean, in Athens as well? Where did you find these people? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, Athens, I think, we, yeah, well, we, in the film, we had different uh, uh, locations. Uh, so um, there are three main locations. Mm-hmm. One of them, obviously, is Istanbul. One of the main characters is Dimitris, who lives in Athens now. But we follow his uh, uh, coach journey back to Istanbul so that he can uh, uh, re- rebury his parents' bond in Greek cemetery in Istanbul. Then there is Thanasis, who is one of the few F- uh, Greeks of his generation who remained in Istanbul. So I interviewed him there. Uh, with Jam, and there is Stelios, the singer and music teacher, whom we see in the Patriarchate in Fener at the beginning of the film, but he moved back to Imbros, uh, you know, Gökçada, as we say in Turkish, where he's interested in rebuilding the Greek community. So we have these main three. Uh, three main. What is next? I mean, what are you planning to do with this documentary? Any plans for a feature film? And where can we view it? Is it out there uh, that anyone can view it? Because I remember I watched it. Uh, it was an event on online through, a, yes. I think, was yes. it Germany, Constantinopolitan? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it I was mean, called Constantinopolitan in Germany, yes, that online okay. event. And we have a screening in Athens, with, again, with the community. And we are going to do one in Istanbul. Uh, hope, yeah, we are just talking about it now. Uh, hopefully, it will be in uh, summer. And after that, uh, um, I, we want to put it online so it will be available in two, three months. Just bear with me. <laughs> it's coming online. Because it has we to can't be accessible. Wait. And, I, yes. yeah. and I want actually people to watch this film and listen to people's stories. That's very important. That's, so that's very, very nice of you that you feel that way. Again. Yeah. And also there is going to be a viewing on 17th of November uh, at Hellenic Center. Yeah. Um, from what I know, the president of the Constantinopolitan in UK approached you and uh, it's going to be a Q&A as well, if I'm not mistaken, because you are going to be there, correct? Yes, I will be. Yes, yes. Excellent, yes. excellent. Yes. Oh, uh, next one. <laughs> yes, no, it's great and well done. We, I mean, thank you so much for, you know, doing this documentary and for trying to tell the people, you know, what is going on. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, you are developing a memory map as well. Can yeah, you yeah, tell think, us yeah. briefly what is this all about? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think first of all, uh, I, I must say, I am also worried about the future of this community in mm. Istanbul because it's an aging and diminishing community. Uh, and uh, the feature of this community is obviously ambiguous. And as you see in the film, uh, there's hope, of course, we should always keep that. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, as a researcher, you know, in my capacity, if I can do something like this, of course, you know, uh, I feel like uh, I should. <laughs> And yes, as I said, uh, Memory Map is a way of providing a digital showcase for uh, heritages that are missing from the official records. And this is also like a community resource too. Uh, so, and the, uh, yeah, so the map includes stories, uh, mm-hmm. sounds, sights, objects that are related to the uh, community, uh, the Greek communities of Istanbul. Uh, and I have these categories, you know, like sounds, dates, image, uh, and they are geolocated. Um, uh, these, uh, these categories emerged uh, in my field work according to, you know, people's stories, because sometimes a sound of, for example, uh, 
or uh, uh, sound of uh, old stairs mm. in a Greek school that you know brings a lot of memories. So I have the recording of that and the story of that. Or you can get, I don't know, a song that they talk about that is important for the community. And the uh, stories uh, come from my interviews in Athens and in, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, and uh, if you see geolocations, actually, there are some stories that are uh, located in Athens as well. So, so when do you think is this going to be ready? And I mean, when can we... Yeah, you, you can now access this is online. It's like oh. an ongoing thing. So I already have some stories there and I have some more to put up. So yeah, you can already see, and you can get some, of course you can get a lot more. My aim was to sort of give, give a bit of sense of what sort of uh, stories people have. And uh, yeah, what you can do. Fantastic. And before we finish, do you have anything to say to the Greek community? From uh, Constantinople or Istanbul, Istanbul, <laughs> Istanbul, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's hard to say because I have a lot to say. <laughs> so you That's know, very I, nice. Yeah, I have a lot to say, and I think I will be saying more hopefully in my book. Uh, so I'm working on it now, and I'm really, really enjoying dealing all with all these, you know, interviews and memories and stuff. It's really I developed amazing relationship with the you know participants, and I feel like I don't see myself not Greek or Turkish or this or that. We just you know connect as yes. people, <laughs> and, and you're I'm learning just, Greek as well. Yes, and I'm enjoying it very much. It's hard. But <laughs> <laughs> next interview is going to be in Greek, you know, yeah, because well, I would so. like to have you again. You have to tell us about your, your uh, writing a book you just said. Yes. So Yeah, it's just, yeah, with work, I'm trying to fit that as well. So let's see. Um, uh, but yeah, it's going to be stories of people, basically. And I just say, well, we have to really think about the future of this community really uh, carefully because it's an important memory uh, and heritage for Istanbul, Constantinopolis, whatever you want to say it. So we have to think carefully about it. Excellent. Thank you so much. I mean, as a Turkish person, I, I think I do think about these Greek memories and I'm interested in, as I said, I like Istanbul and I like, I'm interested in Asia Minor. Mm. So, and of course, Greek memory, Greek heritage is part of it. I'm not talking about antiquity and stuff. I mean, I'm actually interested in people, people's memories, people's uh, histories, you know, their stories. Uh, I'm very much into, yeah, people's stories. And actually, there is a new project related to the next time, Asia Minor. Oh, <laughs> will, yes. Um, yeah, very busy. It's, it's just one last question. It just came in my mind uh, now, you know. Because from what I know, I mean, the families, Turkish and Greeks, you know, they used to be close and friends. And actually, Turkish people helped the Greeks uh, during the difficult time. And they, they're really trying to help some families. Uh, any of your relatives happen to have any Greek uh, friends? Maybe, you know, back then? Yeah. I mean, I think, first of all, yeah, it's also always in my data. And of course, there are nationalists everywhere, mm -hmm. and in, like in Turkey. And of course, these nationalists attacks, uh, attacked uh, Greek, Greeks and some other obviously non-Muslim communities. But like, let's say pogrom in 1955 was a big, you know, horrible event that uh, it happened. And in my, and, and in my um, data, I always hear stories about the pogrom. Uh, you know, with the age group, they were like maybe children, you know, five, ten. And there are mixed stories. Of course, they remember the attackers, but they also talk about their Turkish neighbors who would support them. So everyone yes, had Turkish exactly. friends. It's, yeah, I mean, it's everywhere. It's like it's complicated. We shouldn't think all Turks are good or Turks are bad. Like everywhere, there are some Turks who were bad, horrible, mm, with horrible things. Absolutely. Amazing Turks who, you know, we, we, we can't really generalize. Like everywhere, good people bad people it's about that really <laughs> very true very true well, right memories, thank you so much the same so you know yes. memories, bad memories it's mixed but absolutely yeah. you're totally right i uh, totally agree it was so we should, we should be careful having... when we talk when we just focus on good memories we should not forget that there were difficulties absolutely. when we talk about the difficulties we should also remember there were other understandings and you know good memories so it's all about finding the balance and the way of 
talking about these uh, aspects. So it's the it's the lot, I mean, it's the memories that makes you feel attracted to a place because uh, I can't remember the name. He said when he grew up, he was in Athens. He felt that he didn't belong and he wanted to go back. Yeah. And I mean, that shows it's the memories, you know, it keeps you, it makes you feel um, that you belong somewhere, you know, to yeah. that particular yeah. yes. place. Because as you said, it's not only the difficult memories, but sometimes the beautiful memories are stronger, which is good when we feel that way. Yeah. So we all, you know, that's why it's important to do this sort of anthropological work because we can't just say, oh, they feel like this or that. I don't know. We need to go and ask. And yes. We need to, you know, sort of understand different uh, experiences, different relationship with the place and memory. Uh, so, yeah, and, uh, you know, if you've missed Istanbul, Pera, your life there, and you couldn't actually adapt your new life in Athens, doesn't make you less Greek <laughs> or less Orthodox or this. You're just human. Uh, being you're just attached to your place with your memories with your culture with your own culture that mm -hmm. includes patriarchate you know your uh, church going and greek school like you know zorafion this uh this sort of schools also come uh, out in my field work quite a lot so we just have Brilliant. to listen and understand <laughs> you pronounce zorafion fantastic <laughs> Well done. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly, I hear that a lot. Yeah, with my small Greek. Well so, well, your pronunciation is good, which is good. I think because I hear a lot of uh, Greek-speaking people, that uh, oh. that helps me. <laughs> okay, well done then. <laughs> right, it was a real pleasure having you, Kina. I, I, I would love to have you again because there is so much to say. Uh, you can tell us yes. so much, and um, I wish There's you all the yeah. best. Till the next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Bye. <laughs> Bye.